All right, you're watching TVC News, and we have been bringing you updates across the country on the election today as Nigerians troop out to vote for who is going to be the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and also for senators and House of Rep members. All right, that's what uh, everything is all about today across the country from the north to south, east to west. And friends of Nigeria from across the world have also been very keen on what's going on in Nigeria, what the outcomes will be, how is it going, and how are Nigerians reacting, how are they performing their civic duty, and so on. We have a lot of election observers from around the world monitoring the elections across the country, and we have been uh, letting you know. We have our correspondent on, in every state of the Federation bringing you up to speed with the, with the state of voting process and what the people are saying, the turnout, and so on. And uh, we will continue giving you this blow by blow until the results are announced by INEC. Of course, already on social media, a lot of uh, people pandering pundits all over the place. But it's too early to say this is the direction of uh, what the votes will look like. Of course, just wait for INEC. You get to hear <laughs> eventually what uh, the outcome is all about. I am Mike Okwache. And we'll, in the next couple of hours, we'll be together doing this. With me in the studio is Dr. G.D. Johnson, a uh, public affairs analyst. And uh, we will be looking at this. We'll have other guests joining us uh, sometime soon. Dr. Johnson, good to see you. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mike. And um, I want to say congratulations to Nigeria. That, oh, yes. Um, a lot of uh, use and cries and a lot of various uh, rumor was spread that mm. this election will be postponed and uh, and the likes of it, but we have the election has been held. And exactly. We are waiting the results. But what, so that gladdens my heart, Doctor Johnson. Gladdens. What What do you make of this? Of this? Every time there's a build up to election, people just come up with, "Oh, it's possible the election will not hold. It's possible there's going to be crisis." It, why is that? It's why Why is nature. that? It's human nature, you know. What some time to be conspiracy theorists, <laughs> and then you have some people that will always come up with one theory to support their position which is contrary to what is what is the situation of things so it's not out of place for you to see that to see that oh, the election will be postponed you know until even as out of two days ago mm -hmm. some are still advocating that you know what will postpone <laughs> the election and then um, don't forget the memory we had our recent past mm -hmm. with june 12th yeah. as a result of that that is still fresh in the minds mm -hmm. of so many people that mm -hmm. anything could, could still happen but despite despite the assurances from the president that this election will hold i Nick chairman had always said this election will hold security agents are saying this this election will hold nigerians were still skeptical somewhere and, but if you also <laughs> situate that with the policies of the federal government okay. which which limits the capacity and the people to have access to their to their resources mm -hmm. to their to their hand in and fact, resources. In fact, we'll that, be, itself, we'll, that itself created a tension. You, oh, yes. know? you knew what happened in Shagam. We mm -hmm. knew what happened in many other mm -hmm. places. In Ibadan. Respect, in Ibadan. Edo and Delta State. Delta State. So that itself uh, it was playing into the hands of conspiracy mm -hmm. theories that, you know what, they are making an attempt to truncate the democracy and their attempts to... You, you even know that some governors mm -hmm. even came out with statements suggesting the likelihood of election not holding. Exactly. So, exactly. so, so that itself... Um, created that problem. All right, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll have time to talk about this more. There are so many areas I'd like us to touch. But let's cross over to Kogi State, where Theophilos Elama, our correspondent, is there to bring us up to speed with the situation report there. Theophilos, it's been a busy day, I know. I can imagine how it is uh, around there. But talk to us, what's the situation right now? Well, it's been a busy day, like you said, from early this morning when we moved up uh, towards the INEC um, local government office in Lokoja, where we saw um, election um, uh, and ad hoc staff appeals and the APUs moving there. They were transporting to the various localities, the various uh, polling units in um, Lokoja axis. From there, we moved towards within Lokoja as well, seeing police officers, um, security, trying to keep the peace and ensure that people who are not on essential duties not go about without any valid reasons. For instance, if you're going to the next polling unit, they might not just allow you move, but if you show you uh, proof they are going to vote to show your PVC, they might allow you move. But if you don't have any cogent reason, they can either turn you back or keep you aside. You wait till about um, for, for a certain period before you're allowed to go back home. 
we moved towards uh, several areas. For instance, went to Okemi Axis, Agasa, where the governor voted, and the elections were okay. But the problem we noticed was that the BVAS was a major issue. Um, it took about an hour plus for it to um, work. There was some malfunctioning, there was some password issues, and it, not, it didn't just affect just the polling units we were covering, it affected about six other polling units between Agasa Axis, where and uh, thank God the technical guys were on hand to ensure that. So they had to be running from pillar to post to ensure that people vote. And if, before you know it, about an hour, people had voted. So we realized that this issue um, was quite rampant in some polling units. So we got to some polling units where they had already finished voting. They had already, they, they've been accredited and built it as, at, at about 12 m, uh, 12 noon rather. They had done their own bit and gone. And even one of the largest polling units in Lokoja, they had finished um, voting. And so just saw people waiting for the 2.30 time for them, for the INEC officials to start counting the, the, the ballot. But we got to a place uh, around um, Ganaja Axis, um, poll, uh, polling unit 054, where at 2.20 p.m., nobody had been accredited, nobody had passed their ballot. And it was surprising, of course, the, they first of all accused the INEC official, the ad hoc staff, of coming late to uh, the, the premises to cast for them to cast their votes. And of course, they realized that the BVAS wasn't working. So it took a bit of time. There were some scruples here and there. A lot of people were angry at the fact that the, uh, 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 the ad hoc staff came very late. And at the time they came, BVAS wasn't working. So uh, so at the time we left at about 4.30 to 5 p.m., um, the BVAS wasn't working. But pillars from that axis has shown that now the BVAS is working and, of course, voting is still going on there. But it took a bit of time for that to be sorted out. And so we see that the BVAS um, was a major issue for a lot of polling units that we visited in Lokoja, of course, Kogi State. But, uh, voter turnout. In some of the places monitored, uh, we hear that, uh, especially in places in the south, we hear of uh, uh, low voter turnout in some of the areas. What did you witness in, in Lokoja where you monitored? Incidentally, there was no low voter turnout. A lot of people chipped in. Uh, for instance, we went to uh, Odimanana uh, uh, Axis in Kogi State, going towards um, um, Agasa. We realized that at about 7.30 when we got to that axis, we realized that a lot of people had already lined up. I mean, voting was to start at 8.30, but at 7.30 to 8, the place, the place was already filled. People were already lined up at their different polling units. Now, that polling unit that I talked about had about, uh, about six polling units here yes, from polling unit 8 to about uh, 14 or so. Had about that much. And we had a lot of people go there lined up. They were patiently waiting. And this is the scenario we saw play out in several other polling units, including the polling units where they didn't um, get to vote on time. That's the uh, Ganaja area where they didn't get to vote on time. Many people had uh, trooped in there to wait for the officials. And it shows the eagerness of many people, especially uh, people of uh, Bogi State, the eagerness for them to want to vote in this election. Uh, the political uh, mindsets have been raised this, uh, in this, uh, this period, a lot of people now understand what it means to build. They understand what it means to build their conscience and build in the right leaders. And so they took that on mass to ensure they cast their ballot, despite the fact that many of them complained of the, of the fact that uh, cash crunch was an issue. They couldn't get cash to move around, but they still found a way to move from their, where, 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 where they are uh, re resident to the different pulling units where they are registered. So pulling units we saw in Lokoja and of course, all around Kogi State was um, full to capacity. Many people actually turned out to cast their ballots. Mm. All right, before I let you go, I need you to talk to us about uh, the participation of women. Uh, we have known in the past that women are quite significant, they make a significant number of, uh, of the voting numbers and, vote, and, and, and those who come out to vote. What did you see today as you monitored? Well, Mike, as we monitored, yes, we saw a lot of women come out to vote. Yeah, we saw a lot of women, a lot of youths come out to vote. It's as if there was an avalanche of women and youths coming out to vote at this election. But yes, we saw a lot of people 
coming out to vote, coming out to ensure that their votes are counted. A lot of women, even in places where um, the officials came late, we saw women gingering. We saw women giving people water to drink, uh, free of charge, to ensure that they are well taken care of to, uh, to cast their ballots in their different localities. And it was quite good to see because we realized that a lot of times, many, uh, especially women, we allow to let the men go and do the thing. It's, it's a men thing. But we realized that women and youths are changing the status quo and they are coming out in mass to so They did that in Lokoja and in every area we, 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 we went to monitor. And the places we went to quite early, we saw that, like the place I told you about that, Odin Manana Axis, women came out to vote. We saw a lot of women line up in that polling, in, in that polling unit. And it's, it's, quite, it's, quite, uh, it's quite beautiful to see. All right, Theophilos Elama, correspondent joining us from Lokoja in Kogi State. Thank you very much for bringing us up to speed. We're certainly uh, keeping, keep a tab on uh, what's going on there. Thank you. Okay, now uh, there was this, the issue of uh, the impact of this NARA crunch. You mentioned it earlier, and I, I like us to talk about this to see some people from the question I asked. Uh, they said that uh, it seems this narrow crunch has made vote buying even cheaper. Now, people don't have access to money, so whatever you give to them now means a lot. On the other hand, uh, some persons saw it as, uh, well, curtailing vote buying as a whole. What do you make of it? There are three sides to a coin. Okay. Head, tail, and the edges. And people always look at things from the prism of their perspective and their, and their belief. As far as I am concerned, um, vote buying is not limited to cash inducement. Hmm. And what a lot of people have limited it to reduce it to is cash inducement. There are other forms of inducement hmm. that people use for vote buying. You give gifts, items, you give gift cards and the rest of hmm. it. Now, even with this, you but, can... But you all, can, all those are purchased cannot, with money. Yeah, exactly. So you can, also, you can also send, you can transfer money. It's even make it easier. For example, I want to buy your vote, Mike. Hmm. If I give you cash and you're stepping out of this studio now, someone accost you and search you, you will see the cash. But if I transfer it to your mm. to your account, will anybody <laughs> ask for your phone and check but it? But so, the trick, but so, the trick, uh, doctor, is sometimes this monies they don't want to be able to trace it. That's why it's better it's best to give it cash so that it's not traced as to wh where it came from and where it is going. Because well, if it is within the system, it becomes easy to trace. Um, Mike, hmm. it's very easy. Okay. They said there are polling units. Let me break it down. Right. There are 500 voters in the polling unit. Probably 300 people came out to vote. Hmm. All, all you need is 30 people to distribute the money. You know, use one person to transfer the money. Right. The political class knew how to do this. If you interact and interface with them, they always develop processes and means and mechanisms mechanism. on, how to, hmm. on how to solve this particular problem. But to a large extent, we can't see the cash hmm. now. It's, there's no doubt that this uh, um, Naira policy did not affect wood buying mm. to a certain degree because people don't have access to that fund. And to a certain degree, it can also influence a uh, vote buying because if I have the cash and I come out with you that, mm. I, I bought, I, we are all buying money. You <laughs> bought money, Mike. Everybody's <laughs> buying money. Uh, you, so if you want 10 Naira, physical mm -hmm. ten thousand naira physical cash. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to pay thirteen thousand yeah. naira for mm -hmm. to get that physical cash? Mm -hmm. So every one of us has bought so if I have ten thousand and I'm able to say, can you I have two thousand, will you vote for me? So the challenge we have and which some of us have created is you shouldn't be coming up with conflicting policies. Yeah. You know, after this election, we are going to have censor. Oh yes, that's, 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 that's not a huge yeah, one. That's, that's, it's, a it's, huge it's, it's a huge project. It's a huge project. Why would you pack all of the activity in the last five months of an administration that is coming to an end? Mm. You have election, you have NARA design coming to an end, and then you also have censor. Mm. It's, it's, wow. it's, 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 wow. You see, even when God created the world, <laughs> when God created the world, God used six days mm. And we know we say a day in the eyes of God is like eternity. Of course. Now, God used six days. There were things that were created on the first day, things that were created on the second day, things that were created on the third, fourth, fifth, and on the seventh day, God rested. He rested. Now, you see, you look at what we have packed in the, in, in, in the first five months of this year. Look at what we have packed. And that's, 
that's that's a catastrophe waiting 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 to I, I i want to see how this government will be able to conduct that censor taking into con taking into cognizance of the experiences we have mm. with people handling the beavers machine now you're not talking about the enumeration mm. of the entire country of the entire country of wow. the entire population both old wow. aged and you are dealing with the electorate you're having it's just the electorate the voting age which is 18 and above mm. now not to talk of everybody the entire, old and young so so it's important for those that are coming up with this policy to understand timing. To understand timing. Timing is part of execution. Execution is tactical implementation of strategy. So now in terms of timing, is this the appropriate time to do that? To move that within the, 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 the election cycle? People, look, if someone had gotten cash, if the cash were not intercepted, if Esau could sold his bad right, mm. Esau, in the Bible, for those that are Christian, will understand. If he could sell his bad right because he was hungry, how much more someone does not have cash <laughs> in selling his vote in order to have, in order to have, in order to have. You could see how Nigerians turn to James Bond mm. and um, climbing friends in order to gain access to a bank in order to collect mm. their, their, their money. Whoever is in charge of that policy, and whoever is advising the government needs for them to have a rethink in terms of timing in coming. You, your policy might be of good intention, mm. but the execution might be poor. The execution might truncate the good works you want you want to do. And mm. there's no doubt that this, the timing of this policy is not um, is not a All right, I, I need us to talk about democracy a little bit because there are there are certain things. I would, I would like us to understand and then to also gain your insight into it. Now, many countries of the world, including Nigeria, decided to um, accept the Western type of democracy where at periodic times there is an election, you know, we have chosen four years. There are other countries that chose five years. There are even countries that chose seven years or even ten years, you know, but we have chosen four years. Some persons have said that four years whether it's just four years or even you, you multiply when you are running two terms, may not be adequate to execute the kind of programs that people could see as change enough. Some people, you recall in, two, in 2007, 2006, 2007, what happened in this country where it was alleged that uh, the president of that, at that time wanted, to, uh, wanted a third term. And every time the administration was coming to an end, that rhetoric always comes in. You know, you can stay extra, you can stay extra. But these are all issues that the Constitution has already made clear. So why do these things keep coming? Is this democracy still strange to us that after so many years, we still don't understand what the thing is? The question we need to ask ourselves is that is Western democracy working for Africa? Mm -hmm. Is it even working for Western countries? Is it working for Africa? There's a style of democracy in China. There's a style of democracy in Middle East. Mm -hmm. And does democracy equate development? Does democracy equate people's empowerment? Does democracy eradicate poverty? Now, if you look at it and you situate what you have in the Middle Eastern countries, in the Middle East, where you have a theocratic monarchy, mm -hmm. Monarchy based on religion. Mm. You're talking about Qatar, Kuwait, mm. and then you, the UAE compare, and all UAE, that. you yeah. compare the experiences of those and you situate that even with Western de developed democracy, the experiences are different. There are homeless people in San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco, up, uh, which is the United States, which mm. happens to be the district. Even in the, Los Angeles. Yeah. Which I, are, I was there and I saw people living under some. Uh, so, so, like, so, wow. so there, are, there are people living under the bridge <laughs> in, in Great Britain. Yeah. And you are, you are talking about democracies that have advanced. Mm. And then you compare that experiences with what we have in the Middle East. You see, one of the things that Western democracy has done is to create division. And we are appealing to our fault lines. You see, Africa has, is a multi-ethnic society. Mm -hmm. We have so many tribes mm -hmm. and, and nations, see, if you nations have to put within, that way. Within, within the state. There yeah. are so many nations within the state. And when we have seen that over the years, politics, democracy, the way we practice it, mm -hmm. has, has further caused division amongst, amongst us. And even we have seen where we have seen 
stabilize democratic governance? Has he been able to give them deliverables of democracy? So that's why some have advocated, if you look at the resources we have spent on elections since mm. 1999 to date, do we have anything to show for it in terms of deliverables of democracy? Now, Enek is spending $3.305 billion on this particular election, yet you could see the report we are getting. There is no even generator to exactly. power, to power, in, uh, to power the world returning. Yeah. You know, in, in, I, I'll use the case the, of my local government. Mm. There are 11 wards in my local government, which is if I call local government. Mm. By 1999 constitution, the number of wards, the minimum number of wards you can have is 10, and the maximum you can have is 20. Mm. So for a local government, for you to qualify to be, you must have 10 wards and maximum of 20, 20, 20 wards that constitute a local government. So in a ward, we can see that there is no power. So in 11 wards, you mean you can't get 10 generators to power, to provide them power? In that, in, that, in, that, in that particular instance. So when, when we look at it from that perspective, you see, you have a question mark concerning democracy, but do we have an option? We have to work on this democracy to make it to work. And that's why some have advocated that there is a need for us to have a rethink on what is the best approach. If you are practicing them, what type of government should we have? Should we have a federal government? Mm -hmm. Should we have a unitary government? Should we have a regional government, mm. or should or we have a confederal <laughs> system? Are, are, are you getting my point? Yeah. So, so these are the conversations that some have argued. And if you, if, if, if you reason with me, I think that the best bet for this country is for us to go back to pre-1960, pre-1966 approach, where you have the regional government, mm. where you make the center less... As a less real federal system. system yeah. Where you make the center less attractive where the regions have are, more power have, have more powers and they have control over the resources and we control you the resources go to the center in that case you mean that the region will conduct their own election mm. and then from the from the regional government we should elect representative from the regional government to go to the central government mm. the central government is just to legislate on something like uh, security mm -hmm. like um, foreign affairs yeah, currency currency and military and, 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 military and, mm. and, and, and the rest of that we need to go back to that if we don't you see that every electoral cycle. This is the seventh attempt. Mm. This is the seventh attempt since 1999, Fourth Republic. Mm. This is the seventh attempt. We are still being, we are still faced with the teething problems. We are. It is the same promises that were made in 1999, mm. made in 2003, made in 2007, made in 2011, made in 2015, made in 2019 are the same promises that the the, those seeking for our votes mm. are making in 20. Even in the First Republic and, and the Second Republic. Recall, I, recall that uh, we, we, had, we had the housing as, what, as a very strong uh, uh, campaign point during the Shagari era. We're still talking about housing until today. Yeah, that's, 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 that's because there are some things that we need to take from the exclusive lists mm. and bring to the residual list mm. and let the states and the local government work on that. You know the 1999 constitution does not even recognize local government. An attempt to even have the local government as a third tier of government was jettisoned. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> we only see it in the, on the fourth schedule of the constitution. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this. You're watching uh, the uh, our follow-up on what is going on across the country. We've been, you know, Nigeria has been deciding, or Nigerians have been deciding who their next leader will be. And we've been talking about this and, uh, you know, trying to get insight into some of the dynamics that make up our democracy. And we have Dr. G.D. Johnson here with us in the studio. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we'll be crossing to Anambra State, where our correspondent, Sharon Jason, as well as Bamidile Ajayi, are there to bring us the situation report there. Stay with us on the program. Going to play the report. Is he going to play my report? Eh? Oh, Sharon, my love. You just smile now. Hi. Why is he frowning at this? My dear, smile. I know you are tired, but uh, smile for me, small. Smile for me. Don't mind anybody. <laughs> give me some sugar. Yeah, give me some sugar there. The sugar. Sugar. No, don't worry. I'll give you plenty when you come. I have a factory of it. 
I manufacture sugar. Mwah, mwah, mwah. All right, it's uh, Decision 2023 studio, and on t here on TVC, uh, we've been bringing you up to speed with Situation Report. Now let's cross over to Anambra State. Uh, our correspondent, Sharon Ijasson, is there to bring us up to speed with the developments there. Sharon, uh, it's good to have you on. I know the day has been really busy uh, from your going here and there, monitoring the election and the voting. Uh, what's the situation like right now? Well, it's been a very intense day here in um, Anambra, and um, I and my colleague have been going around um, Anambra State, and despite the peculiarity of the state, um, it's a good one that we are all here safe and sound, and that um, almost um, every polling unit at the moment are um, actually um, counting you know, the votes, and um, they are actually already sending messages across to the website so it's a, it's a pretty fairly good um, day here in Anambra. I'm um, talking to Bamidele Ajayi who is the correspondent on ground here also. Um, how would you um, access the um, activities um, here today? So we can let me tell you that um, against what people can say about today's election everything was seamless, the turnout was impressive, even we set out as hell a few minutes after seven o'clock. It's good to hear to see Nigerians troop out and mass wanting to come out to at least participate in this exercise. Even uh, some of our early uh, videos we have in the morning where some aged senior citizen struggling, you know, because of uh, this uh, no movement situation mm -hmm. that people were coming out trekking in, in yeah. and showing that they locate their polling units. And when we had the delay, late arrival of any personnel, even beavers, some did say that they, will, they wouldn't mind to stay here throughout the day. And ensuring that they participate in this is that they've been longing to see because of the innovation, the, the invention that INEC introduced in this exercise. Just want to tell you that the exercise in Anambra State was seamless and fierce than anyone would say. At least they can give tons up to the commission. Okay, from my own observation on the field also too, I'm very much aware that um, even the um, um, senior citizens said, uh, looking at the years in which they have actually come out to um, perform the civic duties, that there's an improvement. However, um, at um, Oka, look, there was a local government in um, Oka. There was a local government in Oka, and um, we had about 2,000 um, voters um, that they were ready to actually perform their civic responsibility and it was just one um, beavers that was available and um, these youths were very adamant and um, I think this is the first time I would see young persons um, come out in their numbers and um, insist that until they vote they are not going to leave the polling unit. Uh, I think that was really, really impressive. They were already making arrangements to see if they can power up um, the um, surroundings so that the INEC official would have um, um, the necessary um, um, conducive environment to ensure that um, it's a seamless uh, exercise. Um, also, um, there was this concern um, while I was trying to do my report about um, people's um, persons li living with disabilities. Exactly. And um, even though they were given priority during the... Um, the process. There were still some certain sensitive materials that uh, that they needed to mm -hmm. actually um, perform their civic responsibility. For example, um, during uh, when um, um, people that um, the visually impaired okay. persons um, they actually needed assistance, of which on a normal day they could perform their civic responsibility without much assistance it's if similar, the if similar. the braille was actually. Um, available. How would you react to this from the from your own experience also on the field? A similar incident happened that if it is a word in if it is do not that uh, an aged person, a person living with disability, 
found it difficult to, you know, assess some of the facilities that were available and also try to know what and what we at least would do with the beavers. But it took the intervention of the core members and some youth that assisted the man. Even then, they were able to read and interpret what was meant in a local language, of which after the exercise, the man was like, so if I'm getting to uh, um, a community very close to Oka, that's Nebo, we had uh, somebody, a cripple too, had difficulties in you know, traveling himself, you know, transporting himself to the place, but some of the trucks they used to bring a uh, Transport to them. So they, they used that same truck to bring the man to the place. I'll get it to the place too. They also assisted the man. The the PO, I, I want to believe, you know, took that platform to inform the that they should give preference to people of this, which everybody you know, concur. Uh, the, the little challenge I will say that the election in Ambras have with that is the delineation of polling units in some, in some places. Unlike the uh, the Unisic centers, there used to be two poly units there. Mm -hmm. But with this new uh, poly unit that were created, you will discover that some had less than 200. While the region was say has about 2,000 plus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. with, let's say, uh, a little behind time, a level of beavers or so, up to the time we let the few, few minutes pass by. So I'm still asking that why can't INEC move some of those information to the new racks? So moving forward, I know should consider this so that at least should, it depends that most Nigerians will not be self -fragile. They are ready. They are determined to participate in this at both. The timing is not social. And also the, the placement of their uh, beaver's information does not allow them to kind of live where like how I wish they were given such opportunity like others had. Mm. Not been. But the exercise has been thank you very much for your insights uh, mike um it's been a long day here in anambra state i must say but um looking at the peculiarity of the state um many of the citizens are excited or residents are excited that um, they were able to vote um in an atmosphere that was safe and um uh, there was no major incident. It was peaceful. Wow. Um, and that's to um, speak to the Deputy Inspector General of Police visit um, less than 24 hours ago where he assured residents to come out and um, perform their civic responsibility that if you're not a criminal, you have nothing to fear. So with that, with this um, experience um, we had today, we can say that um, um, the security operative um, at Perform fairly, yeah, perform also fairly the well. Of, uh, commissioner of police in the zones assisted the pressure of the personnel. I just want to give it to them, they were professional today because there were instances that uh, a policeman would love to, but they were so professional and coordinated. He says that they were to control the crowd and even the youth. We have supervisors. And also sponsors. Mm. So they, were, they were also assisting them, ensuring that. Yeah, they said it's not business as usual. <laughs> it was just a coordinated operation and everything went well. Over to you, Mike, in the studio. What we have always or often heard of the sit at home order uh, given by some uh, groups and so on. And I wonder if that affected the voter turnout, if people were skeptical about going out to vote today. How did people in Anambra react, respond to that? The sit at home order did not affect um, turnout. The turnout in Anambra states was very impressive. Like I said, one particular word, more than 2,000 persons, and they waited patiently for it to get to their turn, and they said if by nightfall um, they, they, they would switch on the generator on and they were ensure that they, they performed their civic responsibility. So in Southeast, generally, uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have uh, the voter education, we might say, has improved Assistant. compared to when people uh, would um, sit at home and refuse to um, come, home, um, come out to uh, perform their civic responsibility. Um, the last um, election, I remember very clearly that I did a story uh, looking at what people were doing when um, when the um, election process was ongoing, ongoing exactly. I found out that there were people that were playing football, 
there were people the, the that were playing now. they were playing games mm -hmm. but right now there's nothing like nothing like that here right now everybody is outside they are excited they, are, they really want to see who the next president will exactly. be. And somebody, when, like one of the um, uh, respondents said, this is serious business. This is serious business. We have we to. to, to <laughs> some, some respondents we spoke to were like, some said it, and that was their first time of participating. Mm -hmm. And also, they believe in INEC, they believe also in the, the use of beavers that now Nigeria is ready to conduct an exercise that everybody will believe. Nice That's why they said they were, we're, we're not going to worry that even it's going to take them hours. Mm -hmm. They will stay. There, there was this also slogan that they will also be the agents so that in ensuring that the exercise went as they expect. Which was, as far as this exercise is concerned today, Anambra State went seamless and peaceful. Thank you very much, uh, Shaurani Jason and uh, Bambi Dili. It's really nice to see both of you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's cross over to Promise Efoge it's somewhere in uh, Doe State to bring us up to speed. Promise, it's nice to have you on. Uh, can you let us know what's going on? What's the situation like in uh, Doe State today where you monitored? Okay, I am in the particular um, part of the state, which is the northern part of the state, a Sako Auchi axis of the state where um, election was peaceful, relatively so, uh, though we uh, uh, were told about um, parties of um, disruptions in um, um, a few locations and uh, there was uh, prompt intervention by security operatives in those areas. So. I can practically say election in this part of Edo State uh, was peaceful from start to finish. Um, voting started quite late and uh, uh, finished late as well. But one thing that caught my attention was the fact that everyone uh, was interested in the process. Young, old, middle-aged, after casting their vote, I mean, we found them sitting back at each polling unit waiting to get their votes counted and uh, waiting to, to, to ensure that uh, 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 the votes were counted right in their presence before they left uh, those polling units. But uh, information which us has is that uh, there were major disruptions in ASAM. ASAM part of Edo State, which is about uh, two, three hours drive from where I am at the moment as a result of some political talks disrupting um, the, 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 the process uh, much earlier today. Um, here in Esako, uh, the, the, the collision is ongoing at the moment. Uh, it started at the INEC office, just about five minutes' drive from where I am. Uh, but uh, the collision was moved to this hall as a result of the INEC office getting choked, as a result of people really coming in uh, with their, their, um, their materials. And so where I am right now is called um, um, the City Hall. Uh, it's quite bigger than the INEC office. And uh, unlike reports we've gotten from other parts of the state where uh, they have no light, you know, to collate results, there is light in this place. I can uh, do a flip so you get to see uh, what's going on. Those are uh, some of the electoral um, um, officials who have gathered here to collate the results. I spoke with the electoral officer a couple of minutes ago and he says everything is going uh, well as planned. It's really interesting uh, to hear that. Now, make us understand the level of turnout and how people conducted themselves. There were areas where uh, there, were, there was initial scare and anxiety that uh, security uh, could be affected. But how, how was it handled and how did it play out? Well, the turnout was massive, uh, massive in the sense that we saw a huge um, youth population coming out to vote, which uh, was uh, unprecedented. When I asked questions, um, I, I spoke with, with a couple of residents and they said um, the, 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 the turnout today, especially by the uh, youthful population, was impressive and unprecedented. I guess everyone really wanted to exercise 
uh, their, their, their franchise. Everyone really wanted to uh, be a part of the process of, you know, getting in new leaders that will run the affairs of this country um, in the next four years. And so everyone was a part of, 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 of the exercise today. Although there were some persons who were a bit um, non-talent towards the exercise because driving through the streets, uh, through the corridors around here, I saw some persons who sat in front of their houses nonchalantly as if uh, what was going on, they had no business with it. Perhaps they do not even have their PVCs. Uh, in my earlier report yesterday, I talked about the fact that Edo State has um, uh, more than 8 million people, but only uh, just a little above 2 million persons were uh, um, registered for this election. So perhaps um, those persons I saw sitting in front of their houses were not even registered for the, for the, for the process in the first place. And so uh, the, 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 the turnout was, was good, much better than it used to be in those states that I can tell you authoritatively. I spoke with the deputy governor of the state uh, much earlier, and he said he was quite impressed um, at the numbers that turned out um, to vote today. Um, the, the, the process was peaceful. And a uh, uh, few places where we had disruptions, the security men were on ground immediately uh, to, to ensure that peace was restored. Mm. All right. Uh, INEC had um, rescheduled the election in Isan South, Isan North, as well as Igwebe. I, I wonder how the people uh, reacted to that and responded. And what's the situation now? Well, um, at the moment, INEC is yet to make an official statement as regards uh, what will be the outcome um, of uh, voting in those areas. We're waiting uh, for an official pronouncement uh, from them. But what we know at the moment is that voting was inconclusive in those areas. Igwebe, you just mentioned, um, ASA Central, um, 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 a couple of other towns around the ASA access. Remember, ASA is a minority uh, ethnic group in a dose state. However, uh, it's, it's a region that is known for violence. It's a region that is known for photography, especially when elections of this kind uh, 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 comes by. So um, all we, we heard about and witnessed in ASA today didn't come as a surprise because if you, if you go back in time and go back in history, ASA as a region has always been a place uh, that is well known for Togri, uh, uh, um, political Togri, and a place well known uh, for disruption of electoral process. But hopefully, um, INEC will come up with a result and let us know what exactly uh, would be the solution to this. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Promise Fogi, reaching out from Benin in Edo State. We, we appreciate that. All right. We still have Dr. Jide Johnson in the studio, and uh, we'll be talking about elections. Now, at democracy, at times like this, we talk about how people should go out to vote. We had uh, Professor Anthony Killer yesterday, and he, there was a perspective he was bringing forth as to must everybody vote? Everybody. Is it a duty? Even though we call it a civic duty, but must it, must it be everyone who is eligible, who is 18 years, that must vote? Because some people don't, they don't when it comes to the judgment of what makes this candidate different from this and what are the makeups and what are the dynamics and what are the ideas and issues, some people don't even have a single idea, especially artisans and people like that. So they just want to go about their normal duty. But somehow they are told what to do and then they come and then they perform all that. So talk to us from that window. You know, according to an Italian social political philosopher, Bobbio, mm -hmm. He said it's substantial for democracy to be in place. A substantial number of the populace must vote. Okay. That substantial number of the populace must also be knowledgeable mm. to take the right decision. Now, that's where you, your responsibility and my own responsibility and the responsibility of those we have given to conduct election mm. and those we have given to manage the state comes in. Okay. Voters' education. Because the belief of democracy is that right thinking people when given the choice we make the best choices for them and that's why you need all to vote in in, in democracy because that's why it's called popular mm. mandate mm. the government of the people by the people and for the people 
So you require, and you have seen, that's why I, 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 I'm beginning to agree with some school of thought when it comes to this Western democracy. Hmm. You can see the voters' turnout, even in Western democracy, with respect to the various electoral cycle, yeah. how the voters' turnout keep... There's, 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 there's no Western democracy that has 75% voters' turnout. Mm -hmm. There's none. That's true. There's none that has 75% voters' turnout. And if the beauty of democracy is that people that are 18 years and above should come out and vote and ensure that the rightful person is elected into office. i give you this. In 2019, 15 million plus people voted for the president. Mm -hmm. Do you know that... The people that voted for the president in 2015 were more than those that voted for him in 2019. Mm. Were more than those that mm. voted for him. Now, if you look at it, the president had 15 million votes. I think we had 88 point something million registered voters. Now, the total percentage of the president in that election, the person that won the election, was 15 million. Mm. That means majority of the people did not even participate, participate in, in the process. process. Mm. So, mm. we have defined democracy to be the type of democracy, government of the active minority mm. perpetuated by the unwillingness of the majority to participate <laughs> in the process. Is the active, what we have seen is the active minority dictating. We have seen governors elected in Nigeria with less than 250,000 votes. True. That's true. With less than 200, That's true. And that person will superintend over the affairs of the state mm. for the next four years. And then you know in Africa, those that we have elected operate as emperor. Mm. It's, it's the evidence are there. We could see where the president make a pronouncement and some state governors are making contrary pronouncement. We could also see where governors are operating, where they have not conducted local government election mm. since they've been since they've been since they've been in office. So it is important for you to have majority of the people participating in the process. Mm. That's when you have a truly democratic society. We said it's popular. Mandate. Mm, a popular so, participation. So, so, so one popular mandate requires popular participation. Mm. If it is not popular participation, if you don't have majority participation, if we have legitimate legitimacy is, issues. Yeah, that, 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 that's 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 <laughs> that's that's where that's where the problem. That's where the problem sets in. Mm. Told you, a country of over two hundred million people, fifteen million decided. Hi, it's 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 unbelievable. Fifteen million plus decided. I'm not too sure whether we are going to eat the margin of fifteen million in this present result. That this also will give us the accurate figure of the true figure of Nigerians. Mm. Because we have seen the figures of the PVC registered voters mm -hmm. and the PVC collection. Mm. If we do an analysis of the last four electoral cycle, mm. it will give us an indication whether we are actually 200 million <laughs> or not, or whether places where we have large population mm. as, as projected do not even have the population they are claiming to have. Hmm. Now, th this issue of uh, the federal, because you touched, it, you touched on it earlier, everybody, the, the center is so attractive that it, it creates it, a certain kind of, a certain form of desperation for everyone to have a piece of the pie or a bite of that slice of uh, the, the national cake, if there's anything like that. Now, we have all often advocated that that power should be devolved a little bit, you know, to the regions like we had in, uh, in the First Republic. But if we have to do that now, how more difficult do you think it could be? You see, the outcome of these elections we have in, mm. we start a conversation. One, we've listened to various reporters and your correspondents across the land. Mm -hmm. One. There's a dynamic, there's a demographic concerning this election. You saw a lot of youth coming out mm -hmm. to vote for the first mm -hmm. time. And then you saw a lot of women. Mm -hmm. In actual sense, by the calculation, 44 point something percent of the entire voting population are women. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the number of contestants, the ratio of men to women, you know that 90% of mm -hmm. those that are contesting the election are men yes, compared to, 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 to women. That's a conversation uh, moving, moving, moving forward in terms of affirmative, affirmative action. But the outcome of this election, we start a conversation. One, should we have a general election like we are having now and wait for the result like we are waiting for it now? Should we still uphold this federal system or should we devolve power to the center? Mm. Two, should we have a system of government that will reduce cost? Probably you should have a 
a unicameral legislature and not a bicameral uh, legislature to um, sh what type of should we have a prime should we should we appoint ministers by each state or we should appoint ministers from the elected representative just like you have in parliamentary mm -hmm. parliamentary system parliamentary system of government and like me i i'm seems i seems to be in agreement with i used to be a fan of presidential system of government mm -hmm. for more than 20 to 30 years but our experiences in the last mm -hmm. in the last 24 years have, has really changed my my opinion with respect to us having presidential System, system of government. A lot of people system, say it's quite expensive. Uh, yeah, presidential system of government because we appoint ministers and the rest of mm -hmm. it. But for you to be a minister, you have to be first and foremost elected as a member of the parliament. Mm -hmm. From the parliament, you choose you choose the members of the cabinet to mm -hmm. form to form the government. And the capacity to bring the ability to bring the government to an end is even easier because a vote of no confidence on the prime minister passed. <laughs> brings the government to an end. And that was the system we had in the mm -hmm. city. And the center was not that attractive that the leader of the party that won at the center, Sir Modubilo, mm -hmm. said he's not interested in coming to Lagos, mm -hmm. still maintain his premiership of, of the northern and of you the wielded northern. a lot of influence. Are you getting are you getting mm -hmm. so we need we need to we need we need to have a conversation. And we have that conversation whether we like it or not. Because you see the nineteen ninety nine constitution we have is not it was a constitution that's a byproduct of nineteen ninety five constituent assembly. Mm -hmm. It was a constitution that was meant to perpetuate Abacha in power. It was a constitution that um, Chief Bola of blessed memory said is the where we have the five political parties, the five fingers mm -hmm. of, of a leprous <laughs> of a leprous hand. So that constitution itself in 1999, Obasanjo himself that was sworn in by that constitution did not see that constitution until after he was elected into office. You know, it with 12 wise men mm. led by Justice Nikitobi mm. were put together to assemble. Were we the people that actually was that constitution put to a referendum? Mm. If you ask every Nigerian. An average Nigerian wants something to be done with respect to it. We have seen that this present structure of government, we can why would we be putting all the resources in Abuja? Are you getting it? Mm. Why should? Why should? Why, why should you have 36 federating units? That's 36 states of the mm -hmm. of the federation. Mm -hmm. Those are power centers. And then you have several and some of the four local government. And then you have the federal government. Those are the three power centers that we have. Yet one of the center has more money, has more influence than all of the centers where it derives it. Without the local government, there will be state. Yeah. Without the state, there will be federal, be federal government. Go federal government. <laughs> yeah. And then in, in, in deriving authority, in deriving legitimacy, mm. the ones that was created last by the various subunits is suspended under the one, those that created it. So we should, have, we should have a conversation. An average American might not be interested in his Congress election. Mm. It's just his mayoralty election. Exactly. It's just the mayor. In, my, in his life, he might not have anything to do with the president, but he will have something to do with his mayor and mm -hmm. so on. And the council level. And, 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 and his council. Mm. And that's the reality. Your birth certificate comes from the local government. Mm. Your death certificate comes from the local government. Why don't we restructure our system of governance in that direction? The earlier we do that, the better. If we don't do it, whoever wins this election, after the cycle of this election, we'll still come back to the same conversation. You know, someone said, for you to do the same thing, the same manner, and expect to get a, a different, different, result, a different result, is the beginning of insanity. <laughs> it is clear from the structure of government that we have that it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Most of, should we have 36 states? And they have 36 State House of Assembly. I have 36 governors. I have 36 um, uh, speakers. 36 chief justices. Mm. Then each of these 36 states, we have how many ministries? Mm -hmm. Let's say 50, Let's say on the average, 18 ministries. Yeah. 18 ministries, we have 18 permanent secretaries. Uh, multiply by 36. Mm. Plus 18 permanent secretaries. Plus 18 commissioners. That's plus 18 lot. special advisors. Wow. How can we sustain this? These are the questions, and these are the conversations. You see, election will come and we go. We must focus on public governance. It is public governance that really empowers people mm -hmm. and delivers them from poverty.